things are looking better here in Singapore. And we can now actually get out and have a meal outside. But I would still say there's quite a number of people out there who still have to use their laptop or PC to either work or study from home. Recently, I reviewed the MateBook 13 from Huawei. And I still feel that that's a laptop that most of you should take a look at. It's got a nice high resolution touch display, pretty powerful performance for its form factor, all in a thin and light minimalistic chassis. But there might be some of you out there who don't prefer a 3x2 aspect ratio for a display. For those of you, this here is the Lenovo Yoga S740. And to sum it up in one sentence, it's got pretty much everything that the MateBook 13 had and then some give and take, but more importantly, with the traditional standard 16x9 display. So let's get the specs out of the way real quick. Our unit right here runs an Intel Core i7 1065G7, 16GB of RAM, a 512GB NVMe SSD, and most importantly, a dedicated graphics card, just like in the MateBook 13, in a flavor of an MX250 from Nvidia. So you can kind of already know what you can expect in terms of performance, but before I get into all that good stuff, let's talk a little bit about the design. The S740 is really clean. There's nothing fancy, no huge logos, no RGBs, no unique stripes or edges. It's just plain and simple. A laptop that wouldn't look out of place no matter where you are. A smooth, pathetic finish covers every bit of surface. And it's not only nice to the touch, but matte as well. So you need not worry too much about fingerprints and all stains in the long run. In short, it's a laptop that looked really professional, be it in a business meeting or just studying in school. As you might notice, this is the 14-inch variant of the S740 and thus you get a 14-inch panel. The one that I have is a full HD panel, so that's 1920 by 1080 it's IPS and can go up to 400 nits in brightness with support for Dolby Vision. It's a really nice display with great color reproduction and viewing angles, so you can pretty much enjoy any kind of content on it or even go ahead and do some creative work. You can also opt for a 4K panel and that will also bump the maximum brightness up by an additional 100 nits. But same as always, I'll suggest not to get a 4K panel as 4K on a 14 inch display doesn't make sense. And up till this day, Window scaling is still an issue. Now, of course, it has a webcam. It's 720p, not the best image out there, I would say, but it's definitely possible. One thing, however, is that I do have lighting here, and that helps a lot. If you use the laptop in, say, a darker environment, the image will get grainy real fast, so do take note. For the keyboard, you do get Lenovo's signature design where the keys are slightly concave and the keys themselves aren't exactly square shaped. It's a keyboard design that Lenovo has been using for the longest time and as most people would agree, it's a keyboard that's great to type on. There's a good amount of feedback and the keys do feel tactile and satisfying to click. It's of a great size for a 14 inch laptop which meant little to no mistakes while typing and you'll be glad to know that the power button is separate from the keyboard. The keyboard is backlit with your standard white and do get reasonably bright. There is also one thing which I really like on this keyboard and that's the function keys where you don't have to actually press the function key to use the function itself. Just tap on them, that's nice. Moving down, we have the trackpad and it's decent. It's reasonably sized and does run precision. So that's two criterias checked. The only thing that I didn't really like are the left and right clicks themselves which are a little mushy, kind of like most laptops out there. Overall though, it's a decent trackpad. Speakers wise, they won't win any awards. They do have a little bit of bass and the vocals are quite clear, along with slight separation thanks to the placement of the speakers. But it just doesn't get that loud. It's okay, but nothing fantastic. We then come down to ports, and this is where the S740 might tickle your interest. On the right, you get a full-size USB 3.1 Gen 2 port along with a power LED indicator. On the left, you get your standard barrel plug for power, another full-size USB 3.1 Gen 2, a headphone mic combo jack, but most importantly, a Type-C port. This Type-C port supports data transfer, power delivery, display port output, but most importantly, Thunderbolt 3, which I guess meant everything that I just said. Anyways, with Thunderbolt 3, it enables the S740 to be much more flexible and perhaps even upgradability down the road. So that's all on the physical aspects of the S740. We now come to performance, and like always, more towards the creative side of things. 
So here goes. In Cinebench R20, the Intel Core i7 1065G7 does get a multi-core score of 1515, while a single core scored 437. This is in line with the scores I achieved on the XPS 13 2-in-1 which has the same chip, and it's roughly 25% better than the Core i5 10 in the multi-core score as compared with the MateBook 13. As for DaVinci Resolve however, things take a slight turn. The 10-minute 1080p render took about 36 minutes, while the 15-minute 4K render took an hour and a half. If I were to bring up the scores from the XPS 13 2-in-1, the results are pretty much in line. But compared to the Core i5 10 u that's in the MateBook, the render times are taking roughly 50% longer. In terms of temperatures, it's not the best, with it hovering around 90 degrees Celsius for the entire duration of the render. But it does do so at clock speeds above 2 GHz, so I would say not too bad. One thing that did surprise me however was the performance of the NVMe drive. Sequential read and write speeds are fantastic as most laptops do, but here, the random 4K was actually really great as well, getting over 1GB of read and write speeds. This means transferring multiple chunks of files is still going to be quite fast. For games, I would say to keep the simpler and lighter titles like CSGO, where you can achieve over 60 frames per second even on the maximum settings at 1080p. You can also play AAA titles, but I would suggest to drop the resolution and the graphics down a notch in order to achieve much more playable frame rates. As for battery life, I got a solid 7-8 to eight hours of actual real-world usage, which meant I was on Wi-Fi, documents, browsing, YouTube, this and that. It's certainly enough for a single day of usage. Overall, it's a laptop that has pretty much everything you want in a good everyday laptop. It has a clean design, a great display, that familiar Lenovo typing experience, plenty of ports, and great all-round performance. With that said, however, I still do have to bring back up that webcam quality. It's doable, passable, but not great. And if you are creative, stick to 1080p video editing. Or use this for photo editing instead. It's got a great display, and the performance is plenty for photo editing. 4K video editing is still a bit of a stretch. The main point here is this, weigh your options, the pros and the cons. Take a look at the S740 and see if it fits or checks any of those boxes. If you have any questions, drop us a comment down below, subscribe to us if you haven't, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Till the next one, see ya!